and now this is even more exciting because we're followed with Danielle. And Danielle, I'm really excited that you are here. I found Danielle when I was looking for another speaker for this program, really. And, and she kind of fell into my lap. And she is the founder of the San Francisco Psychedelic Society that is actually worldwide, okay? She's the founder of Psychedelic Recovery. And that, yes, is addiction recovery, guys. And the founding of Decriminalize nature oakland okay so she has been part of the whole decriminalization movement she is very young for having accomplished so much and it's very very exciting she works with building conscious community she educates about using psychedelics she has integration groups worldwide and she's coming to us actually when she leaves here she's teaching a microdosing event so this is a fantastic woman so danielle welcome hi Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here. Definitely, really nice to meet you, Danielle, and, and see you in person. Likewise, <laughs> well, thank you for inviting me to your amazing community here, and a deep bow of gratitude to you, Joan, for all of the work you do for humanity. Oh my God, I adore you, and I'm just so excited to share you with my tribes, okay, my people, and uh, it's just really, really exciting. So why don't you start by telling us about you, your society, and how you got here. Hey, thank you. I also want to say just thank you to Sari for that beautiful presentation that you gave. Uh, that was, I really learned a lot from you and I hope we can connect after. Uh, so greetings everyone. I'm Danielle. It's an honor to be here and I want to start off by thanking the land that I'm on. I'm currently sitting on a lonely land here in Oakland, California. And I've learned in this psychedelic space how important it is that we honor our indigenous ancestors that came before us. So a little bit about me, I was brought to this work because I healed an addiction, a 12 year addiction to pharmaceutical drugs with psychedelic medicine. And I've put all of my passion and healing into this nonprofit organization that I run here in the Bay Area. We were, we're actually now mostly online and uh, we provide community education and integration and support for individuals across the globe that are interested in learning about altered states of consciousness and psychedelics. Mm -hmm. And we facilitate integration circles where people can come and unpack their psychedelic experiences in a group setting and learn from one another in the groups and em really embody the realizations that come through the psychedelic experience. A lot of our focus of our organization is on harm reduction and people come to us when they don't know a lot about psychedelics. They don't know where to start. They don't know how to use them um, safely. And a lot of the work we're doing is eliminating the stigma around psychedelic medicine. Um, and we do that by educating people on how to use it properly so that we can minimize the risk and minimize negative experiences, which then um, develops into global stigma. I like that. So tell us a little bit more about the classes that you've been teaching, like your microdosing, your experience with that. I know a lot of people here are very much interested in that as well. Yeah, thanks for asking. So we are, well, today we're launching our, um, the microdosing movement. So we teach these courses that last anywhere from four to six weeks. And um, the purpose of this is so that we really get to build a community within the course so that you're not just taking a presentation and leaving. You get to meet other people in the course. You get to meet the facilitators, ask questions, and actually make friends um, in the psychedelic community as you're going through the course material. So this today we're launching the microdosing movement and this whole course is basically giving the lay of the land about microdosing. And we're teaming up with this group, the Microdosing Institute out of the Netherlands and the Flow State Micro. Um, and also Jim Fadiman, who is a renowned psychologist and author of the Psychedelic Explorer's Guide. And he invented this protocol for microdosing, uh, which basically uh, educates people on how to use the medicine, like which days to use it, which days to take off, and um, we're going to be covering protocols, best practices, preparation and integration, testing your mic microdose, reasons for microdosing, and how to integrate the microdosing experience. It also comes along with a microdosing journal so you can track your experience and learn how to track your experience so that you can learn about the 
the small changes that might be made, but that will lead to those big changes and transformation in your life. I really, really love that. So um, how has it helped you, like, or, or your experience in working with people with addiction recovery? Because I know that it's the forefront now with plant medicine and with the psychedelics. Like, could you address that for a minute? Like who would be a candidate, how that might work or look? Yeah. It's, it's interesting to think about, you know, taking a psychedelic substance or taking one drug to overcome another drug. It seems sort of counterintuitive to introduce more drugs for an addicted. But we have found that psychedelics are actually addiction interrupters, meaning that they can stop a person from their addiction uh, behaviors and that pattern that they're on and snap them out of the addiction process. Psychedelics allow for people to to view their life and view their addiction and from a different perspective. So I would say someone that is that is interested in getting off of pharmaceuticals or tobacco or hard drugs and they haven't found that the abstinence only path is sufficient enough or, or adequate enough for their recovery and they're interested in unlocking their addiction with plant medicine. Um, this group is for them and we basically get together uh, several times a month and we talk about how psychedelics are helping our addiction process and we focus on changing the language that we use to define our reality around addiction. So much of the psychedelic experience fosters that transformation and that growth. But in this paradigm that we're in of addiction, labeling ourselves as this addict or that we have this disease that's never going to be healed or transformed doesn't necessarily align with the psychedelic experience. So we focus on changing that language that we use. We are not identifying ourselves as addicts. We are people that have experienced addiction and now we are transforming out of that. And always being conscious that we have addiction is part of my human experience, but I am actually more powerful over my addiction. I am not powerless over any substance or behavior. And we shouldn't be identified with, um, our personal identity shouldn't be attached to what we consume. That is so interesting to me because when I first started in plant medicine journeys, I did, I met a few women in the group who had said, well, I'm an AA, I haven't had a drink for 20 years, but, and I'm a little anxious about this, it's gonna trigger me to have a relapse, you know? And so it was the first time I'd actually thought about, you know, like alcohol addiction and plant medicine. I've lost several friends in the last few years to alcohol. And so I'm finding this really interesting and helpful. Well, condolences on your friends that have been lost. And you know, I pr my prayer is that people that are struggling can find us and feel that there's, there's faith. There's light. Beyond hope, there is faith that people can transform out of addiction and truly come home to themselves. I, I, and I agree. How can people find you? So you can find us on psychedelicsocietysf.org. Our new website just went live last night, and I'll put that in the chat here. Wonderful. I don't know if there must be some questions. I haven't had a chance to look at them. And also, were you involved in some of the make the legalization of psychedelics? Tell us a little bit about that, because I know we have a lot of activists who hop on. Yeah, so we were part of Decriminalized Nature Oakland, which is a resolution that was passed last year on June 4th in the city of Oakland. And basically, this resolution decriminalized the all all schedule one entheogenic plants and fungi which allows people in the city of oakland to be able to gather grow and gift their own medicine but you can't commodify it or sell it so there aren't any sales allowed or allowed there aren't you know mushroom shops popping up you can't go buy mushrooms but you can grow your own you can gift them away and it also allows for people to um to use ayahuasca and dmt and psilocybin mushrooms um, cactus we don't talk a lot about the use of peyote because it's such a scarce, um, such a scarce plant, and it's being wild, wildly harvested, and it's really a risk to the peyote community. So we encourage people to stay away from peyote and work with San Pedro of Huachuma. It's just a very sensitive subject uh, within the psychedelic community around um, the exposure of peyote and the, how it's an endangered species, and. Um, 
Also, this measure allows for Iboga and Ibogaine, but that's also tricky because you need a doctor to, generally you need a doctor to work with Ibogaine. Um, these are very serious master plant teachers. So it's been interesting to unleash these medicines in the decriminalized format within Oakland. And now Decriminalized Nature is working on a, a community-based ceremonial healing initiative, which they're trying to legalize ceremony in Oakland um, and have it be this pilot program for the rest of the state. And there's also um, currently a senator out of San Francisco that's wanting to decriminalize all psychedelics, um, including LSD and MDMA within that measure. And hopefully my prayer is that someday all drugs will be decriminalized and people won't go to prison for what they put in their body and we can end the war on drugs and replace it with education and community. Well, I really stand for that. Absolutely. First of all, we should all have the freedom to choose what we're going to put in our body, the kind of consciousness that we want, and no one should prevent our ascension in those ways. This has really been wonderful. I have one last question for you. And, and then I know you have your own event. You said that the master, you mentioned the word master teacher plants. I'm not sure some of the people are newbies. Can you say what a master teacher plant is? Yeah, so a master teacher plant is a, a plant that there's many, there's many plants out there, but a master teacher, we like to call Iboga, Ibogaine, Ayahuasca, Peyote. These teachers have been around for thousands of years that have, teach, that have taught millions of people how to access the inner workings of their psyche, that have healed millions of people. And we have a lot of respect and reverence for these teachers and that they shouldn't be used lightly. They shouldn't be used without individuals that have been properly trained to, be, to, to work with them and individuals that know how to properly prepare people, navigate that experience and integrate people um, while working with that plant. I love it. I love it. I really appreciate it. I know that your time is valuable. Um, I'm sure we have some questions in the chat room for you. People are already asking, how can I find out about this? How can I join this group that's starting tomorrow? Actually, the group is starting today. It is her microdosing. So if you can also, when we're done, hop in the chat room and let everyone know a little bit. But can Danielle comment on organic versus non-organic shrooms and wild versus homegrown? Interesting question. Yeah. So I have been hearing about people that are putting pesticides with mushroom cultivation to prevent from the flies and I'm really concerned about that um, so I would say that try to grow your own medicine and we teach mushroom cultivation workshops where you can learn how to grow your own medicine and um, you know wildly it, if you can harvest them in the wild that's also good but make sure you know what you're doing because there are um, I've heard about challenging ways like of people drying them improperly and getting really sick that way or choosing poisonous um, mushrooms in the wild. So I think it's important to, to know where you're getting it from and know how it's cultivated. And they're actually fairly simple to grow if you learn how. You can basically grow out of the size of a shoebox and that would last you over a year. Um, so if you're interested in learning about cultivation, connect with the Psychedelic Society and uh, we will have some mushroom cultivation workshops this year. Oh my goodness, I think that's fantastic, fantastic. This is great. Neil, you have any more questions? She did a great job. Can we hear you? Sorry, I was on mute. But I was gonna say, uh, Santa Cruz also decriminalized, right? Yep, Santa Cruz decriminalized, Ann Arbor decriminalized, and yes. there's like Denver. Denver is just mushrooms. Oregano, so I mean oregano, Oregon. <laughs> I like oregano. oregon. Yeah, Oregon was, was interesting. They decriminalized all drugs, but they didn't yeah. decriminalize ayahuasca and ibogaine. And then if you you still can get a ticket if you get drugs, and then just go right back into the system. But it yeah. is a, a step. It's definitely oh, yeah. a step. Direction and they legalize psychedelic therapy with mushrooms, which will that program will actually be launched in two years. Yeah, I mean, this is just the beginning. Just like yeah. think, like we're actually, I feel, making a lot of headway for just all of a sudden. Like, but I do want to give credit to the fact that some people have been working a long time to get to this point. But this is just the beginning of the decriminalization, and it, it may take like a little while in order for it to be implemented into pop culture. But um, 
it's definitely happening and you can't really deny the therapeutic effects from these like these herbs plants and fungus you can't deny it and they wanted to for so long but now the the research and the studies show that people are getting really great you know, results from this and they want to be heard and i was actually listening into the santa cruz i was watching the youtube live while they were doing the whole thing i spent like half the day listening to it and there was um, vet, um, vets you know war vets they were all just regular people coming up there not like not just like people you may think that are into the psychedelics but regular people that were coming up talking about how it helped them with ptsd and this is what made the council actually have a unanimous vote to decriminalize because yeah, I love you know, it. we're not we're that the energy has been focused on the wrong place when it comes to healing western medicine can help with right. a lot of things but now it's time to really um to get rid of the stigma and to start addressing these issues so that we can live an abundant empowered life you know all over the planet and it's the age of aquarius that we're stepping into so i think it's awesome like the this freedom that's happening through the psychedelics so yeah, danielle Deborah's asking here um where can she find out about this and how to join the group starting tomorrow. Did you put it in the room already? Today. Oh, today, yeah. Yeah, I put it in the chat. So it's on Eventbrite, uh, the microdosing movement. And you can also look on psychedelic society sf.org is our website. And um, we hope that you join us for the microdosing movement or any of our free integration circles and many future offerings, cultivation workshops. Yeah. And this is we are honored that you've been with us. Definitely. This is just the beginning of what you are creating. Like it's just going to get bigger and bigger because you're in the beginning of an, an industry that is going to sweep the entire planet. Yeah. yeah. Yes. The forefront Amazing. of consciousness, the forefront of awareness and taking back personal freedom, medical freedom. I love that. Exactly. Definitely. Agency, freedom and ascension. Mm -hmm. That's right. All right. Do you want to, um, what if else you do we wanna, have? Um, if you want to share any final thoughts and then maybe stick around just for a bit in the chat room, if people have some more questions that they can ask you, that'd be great. Yeah, I would love to. Well, I just want to give a big gratitude to everyone that's tuning into this webinar today. Thank you for your open mindedness and your interest in this subject and get involved in the psychedelic community. We just we want more people as a part of this community and we we want you to be a part of it so please reach out get involved come and meet us and neil we truly look forward to collaborating on more future offerings thank you so much for inviting me here thank you danielle I'm just i'm just clapping for everyone okay i just i'm just going to be the universal clapper <laughs>